cool. Greetings. Once again, this is Dave Crusoe. We're, uh, we are uh, broadcasting the first Tech Talk Hangout on the topic of my.future. Um, I, uh, I welcome you to the presentation. It's a pleasure to, uh, to know that you're all out there. Um, and we're joined by a really distinguished panel of mm. uh, educators and um, club professionals from across the movement this afternoon. Uh, the first person I'd like to present uh, is Abby Fiddler. Abby, I'm going to present you to everybody. There we go. So Abby, say hello. Um, Abby works with us here at the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, and she's a director um, with us on the creativity and innovation team, I believe. Abby, could you talk more about yourself for a second? Sure. Um, I'm actually fairly new to this team. Uh, this time last year, I was a uh, tech director with Boys and Girls Clubs of the Low Country. So I get the amazing experience of working on My.Future from this side, where we look at implementation and getting all the cool stuff put out. But I also have experience on the staff side, actually running it in the club with members. That's awesome. And Abby, what else are you? Uh, what else? Are you, what else is up these days? Lots of cool things. Um, we have projects that we're working on as far as coding, learning to make apps. We have cool stuff happening, obviously, with My.Future and all the fun stuff we want to put out on that, especially in our extensions area. And um, let me think of what else. Uh, I don't know. Dave, help me out. What all do we have cooking? Uh, that's a great question. No, that's um, those are those are great. So, guys, we're working on things like coding, and there are lots of questions swirling about mobile devices and clubs. Um, over the next um, few months, and in fact, over the next year, we have a, a nice schedule of technology hangouts, such as this. We can only co cover so much in one time, so this is really focused on the foundation of the foundation being the MyDot Future program. Um, but we did want to sort of share some of what's going on, so you guys know what what's coming. Um, as we'll announce at the end of this hangout as well, the next dialogue to be held in September, the next one of these Tech Talks, will focus on coding and coding as a pathway um, within clubs. But before I deviate too far from uh, all of the awesome things going on, I'd like to present to you the next um, fine individual with us. Um, this individual's name is Kyle Glazer, and he's the after school and STEAM coordinator at the Stara Heinz House uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Kyle, um, what would you like to share? Well, I'm, uh, as you said, Dave, uh, Kyle Glazier. I'm here at uh, Sarah Hines' house on the north shore of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, not far from our sports stadiums here. Uh, we serve um, kids from all over the city. Uh, specifically, I run our educational programs, um, what we call after school, the first hour that kids are in the building, some of our tech-based programs. We have a program that we started here called Media Lab. Kids do uh, digital photography, filmmaking. Uh, we did a little bit of web design this year. Um, so uh, obviously, my future is, is is very much geared for the sort of programming that I run uh, here at Heinz House. We had a chance to do some of those modules this year, so we'll be talking about that. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, that's that's really cool, and it was a pleasure. It was actually my pleasure to visit you guys a bit ago, um, see right. what's going on. So, uh, way cool. Um, next up, and then of course not not uh, not least at all, um, is our friend uh, Lakita Moye, uh, who is the membership coordinator um, who wears many hats. Uh, today's hat is invisible, perhaps, um, but she is at the uh, Richard England. Um, uh, Clubhouse, the Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater Washington. Um, and let me just switch the screen. And uh, Lakita, what would you like to share? Hello, my name is Lakita Moye. As I say, I work at the Richard England Clubhouse here in the Mission Capital, Washington, D.C. I am the Tech Advisor, which started when I um, launched the Mad Future Initiative. I am also the Smart Girl um, Council for the Middle School. And I also am the volunteer coordinator here at the Boys and Girls Club of Washington. And I have to say that this has been a program that is since this quarter, and I was excited to lead it, and it will be happening in the fall. Awesome. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, let me just uh, let's see. 
There we go. So I appreciate that. Um, welcome everybody to the Madad Future Tech Talk. Um, we've introduced our, our fantastic group of panelists. Um, there in the background as well, you see a, uh, a computer. It unfortunately can't introduce itself, but uh, it's showing the website, which we'll get to. Um, to set the sort of context for where we're going this afternoon, the first thing we're going to hit is um, uh, really just a brief dialogue, an overview of what this MyDot Future program is, um, its origins, and, and then we'll talk about exactly what the essentials um, work is. The next thing we'll do is to engage our two panelists, um, actually three panelists. Abby implemented this at the club, too. She can talk about that. Um, uh, so our three panelists in dialoguing about how they implemented the program, what they learned from it, what, what was a challenge, etc. Um, and then we'll round out with QA. And I did want to mention, it's really important, that there's a question answer functionality that you guys see. It should be a yellow QA button, I believe, on your screens. Please use that. I see that some of you have already submitted questions. Um, bear with us because we will address those questions uh, after the main sort of introduction to what uh, my.future is and after the panelists. So we will definitely address the QA questions you have. Um, do bear with us. So with that said, let's dive in. Um, we expect to wrap this up before uh, the full hour is out. As I know you guys are all busy. Um, we wanted to set the big, big context. Um, in a second, I'll hand it over to Abby, but to set this sort of huge picture, um, when I was brought on two years ago here at the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, there was a big question. Um, we knew that Club Tech had done fantastic things for the movement as a whole, uh, really helped young people build digital literacies. We also knew that the world had in many ways moved beyond what Club Tech could possibly address with the Skill Tech 1 and the Skill Tech 2 focused mainly on basic um, uh, Microsoft Office and sort of Microsoft Suite competencies. So we, we really wanted to get very broad and big and think huge about what kinds of things all members could and should know about the digital world. And that's what uh, that conversation, rather, is what bore MyDot Future Essentials, a big picture thinking about the digital competencies that kids could have and to give them the platform to move on from there into the future. Um, so with that, we established the MyDot Future program, established in part upon a set of sort of hidden standards called the, the um, Mozilla um, Web Literacy Standards. It backs this all. Um, and it has been just fantastic to roll out a series of things that, that move in that direction. But I'm stealing thunder. I'd love to hand it over to Abby to really dive into the MyDot Future um, dialogue at writ, uh, writ large. Abby, could you, could you tell us more about this? Absolutely. So um, as we mentioned, MyDot Future is sort of our effort to uh, take a, a big, big chunk of needs and abilities and activities and sort them out. And we do that by using three different things. So a couple of things that are going to be important as we talk about those are basically pathways, badges, and portfolios. Um, hopefully everyone has at least heard those words before. Um, in this context, we have some kind of special applications for them. So uh, starting with pathways. And that's basically our effort to take all of these abilities and all of these uh, things we want our members to be able to do and put some structure behind them. So it's fantastic that we want our members to be great digital citizens. We want them to be digitally literate. We want them to be safe online. We want them to be coders and scientists and artists and all of these amazing things. So how do we get them there? And we decided that the best way is to make a path. So basically the effort behind My.Futures and its uh, foundation level, which is essentials, is to give members those skills. So if you start with NetSmarts and you know that your members can be safe online, you can give them essentials, they can learn their basic foundation level skills, then they might discover that they love coding. So maybe from there you do Hour of Code and then maybe after Hour of Code you do App Inventor and then after App Inventor they uh, go on and you know take a, a certification course. So um, really an effort to put some structure and some, uh, some method to the madness of all of these amazing things that can be done online. Um, those are things that we're definitely still working on, and absolutely, if you have activities and things that you want your members to be able to accomplish, we would love to hear about that. The other important thing is digital badging, which we all know that our members do amazing things, and we know that they love to be recognized for them. So badges are really a spectacular way that we can recognize great accomplishments and also keep track of those accomplishments, because it's fantastic that 
somebody gets a sticker at the end of the day, but what's even more fantastic is when they can show that off later and when it means something and they can really build on that and create that sort of uh, pathway out of those badges. And of course, in order to get that badge, we have to put some effort behind it and, and show that they've really done something and that's where our portfolios come into place. So portfolios are really a way for a member to create a, a, a book, for lack of a better word, but a digital portfolio that is representative of the things that they can do. So if they are on that essentials uh, foundation level and they complete you know, eight activities, they can show that they've done that, they can show the work product from that. Um, and then as a staff member, you can say, I recognize these and I can see these things and you can share those things. And so that's worth a badge or this is you know, next level, so we're gonna move you up. Um, it's a really great way for not only staff to keep track of what members are doing and who is accomplishing what at what level, but also for those members to really be able to show off what they're doing and for them to be able to carry that with them. So as they move on, they can look at things they've done in the past and how much they've grown. Mm -hmm. Ms. Rose, you have a call online. Um, so, Dave, if you don't mind, can we pull up the website? Absolutely. Let's see here. All right. So this is the main My.Future site, which has a couple of important things on it. Um, you'll notice, the obviously, the main title there is the giant Start Here button, which is a really excellent way to get your members on it because we all know that large buttons are easier than small links. Um, you also notice at the top there's a couple of options up there that say essentials and extensions. Essentials is our main level right now. It's got 40 some odd modules in it that are all specific activities relevant to three different paths. You'll see those paths right underneath that main header that say exploring, building, and communicating. And those are our three styles of modules that basically lay out all of these uh, foundation activities that we want members to go through. So there's, um, as you see there, uh, win, lose, or paint about making drawings, there's making videos, there's creating charts, there's learning to type, there's learning to manage your passwords, um, all sorts of skills, abilities, amazing activities that you can pick and choose from for what's relevant to your members, what's interesting to your members, and what your members' needs are. Um, back up at the top, that Essentials tab, like I said, will take you to all of those modules. Um, the Extensions tab is a little bit different, and that's really where we start talking about what might be a part of these pathways. So they're still laid out in those three categories for exploring, building, and communicating. Um, and each one has a couple of additional uh, activities that you can see here. So, for example, under Exploring, we have links to Khan Academy and edX. So when your members have questions about specific topics, they can rely on these to really get further and further. Um, if you haven't seen any of these yet, please feel free to explore. Um, you'll see some of these here, like I said, get into those coding levels. So Hour of Code from Code.org, um, Game Tech, which is a, a former Club Tech program, uh, Code Academy, Robotech, all of those will be laid out in there so that they're easily accessible but obviously you can still tie them into the specific activities that your members are doing in an easy way to find them. Um, and then the last thing, um, are we able to pull up the badge site? Absolutely, let's see here. All right, so this is the, the back end for staff on My.Future where you can actually log in and issue these badges to your members. So there are, as you see here, four different badges that represent different levels, um, starting with your Kilo badge and working up to your Textbert Code Ninja badge, which I feel like you have to do the hand motion when you issue it. <laughs> um, but the idea here is that you can keep track of what your members are doing with their online portfolio, and when their work product merits it, you can go in and then issue them that badge. And it's not necessarily, um, you know, maybe an everyday sort of thing, but you know they complete those sort of level activities and, and it's really valuable then, right? They have this portfolio, they've done their initial you know, art activity, maybe they've done a, an online safety activity, um, and so you can sort of round out, help them round out that portfolio as they move on. Um, like I said, you do issue them straight from here, so there's those little send buttons right underneath. Um, and then there's also additional resources for staff back here as well, so you have things about um, facilitating the program, uh, links to additional resources, um, and lots of uh, cool stuff to get you net smarts. Um, obviously, digital arts is not something we want to forget about because that definitely ties into the things that we're doing. So 
all of those uh, sort of additional programs that you guys will probably remember from the Club Tech umbrella will be here as well. Awesome. Cool. Abby, thank you so much for laying that all out. That's fantastic. I'm going to put my screen back. Um, cool. So this is indeed the MyDot Future website. Um, there are a few things to know. The, the, um, the website is right now still under construction, as always. In fact, it'll be under perpetual construction in a really good way. We want to um, bring much more to the movement, and we want to do it as frequently as we can. Um, there are also some things that we're trying to iron out. So uh, if you do try to log in, for instance, to issue badges, and I can't replicate it here, this computer's logged in, um, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a text around the login form. Um, because of the recent change to BGCA net the intranet for staff in the field um, the profile services the profiles are not linking correctly so there's a guest login that you can use um, issuing badges should work as normal so it shouldn't be an issue but you do have to use that guest login until we get that resolved I'm guessing it's going to be about a month we're working on it um, let's see so next um, over this year by the end of the year we'll have another iteration of the site out we've, we've taken some feedback into account around badges and tracking um, we've taken some feedback into account in terms of the kinds of activities you want so we've in fact added some already um, Abby's got some of the works around uh, building computers I believe right yes. Um, and we had a, a number of requests for uh, Minecraft uh, as an activity for clubs to engage constructively. So we see some, yes, uh, there's some really awesome opportunities around Minecraft and gaming. And um, really, we want to help people build constructive experiences using the media of their day. Um, then, let's see. Uh, Finally, um, badges. One thing I did want to add to that is um, uh, the movement spoke and we listened. Um, we listened in, two, in, in three senses, actually, in each one of those. The, the, the um, idea of pathways, the idea of portfolios, and the idea of badges are things that might have new words associated with them. As Abby mentioned, you may have heard of these, but they might be new. But the ideas themselves are actually things that you told us. Um, so in terms of... Uh, pathways for instance a common question is I've run this program what do I do next or I would like to run this program how do I get there so that's the idea of pathways right it's actually a nice fit for what you already do portfolios where do my kids save their stuff do they save it on a computer or online that's the idea of portfolios and we've provided guidance and inf information around what you guys can do and it's here online in the admin back end of, of the website and then finally badges Badges, that's kind of a, that's a new term maybe, right? What's a badge? Well, I, I've heard this, um, in fact, in a number of clubs, uh, uh, Denver, in fact, was the first. They said, we want kids to be able to do something before they get access to the computers in unsupervised time. Or, we want kids to be able to do X in order to get Y benefit, right? So a badge formalizes that. It isn't this new crazy thing we're inventing. In fact, it's just a formalization of these great ideas we've heard from the movement. So, for instance, some clubs use badges as a way to ensure, as Abby mentioned, that kids have gone through net smarts and essentials before they can just use the computers in free time, right? They'll be safe and they'll use the machines in a more savvy way for their homework or whatever. Um, so these are structures that you guys do. See them that way and think of them that way, as opposed to brand new things that are just crazy and out there ideas. No, these all fit with what you do, and we really wanted to take that into account. So uh, I hope that makes sense. Um, before I go to the panel, I see that some of you are submitting questions. Please keep those coming. Um, we will address those just after the panel. So without further ado, um, let's open it up, right? Let's actually hear about what people have done. Um, we started in one direction, let's move in the other direction. So, uh, Lakita, could you tell us um, about what you guys did with, with My.Future? How did you implement the program? Who was it with? And uh, what else would you like to share about that? So, um, My.Future, the club tech program here at the Richmond Clubhouse, I targeted the middle school age group. And so middle school, we objected to age grade group. I did both male and female. We did the modules. We met every Tuesday and every Friday. 
And when we talk about those portfolios and things like that, it's really subtracted their work. So we do not do the online portfolio, but also the live and flash drives as well. And what I like to do is make change fun. So while we did this in the classroom on the computer, we also did stuff outside of the classroom. So I did show scripts. So I took this like Microsoft tool and we like photo manipulation and we all get surfaces to go out into the mall and take pictures and learn how to edit them and do this for the spy museum, they were able to spy, to do the museum, but they were able to do a news test there for the day. And when you talk about badges, I did um, give out badges. I should have utilized them more, but I did a different approach, so to speak. So I did a tip master of the month. Hmm. And tip master got a, a medal. So I did one for every month. And on this past Friday, we did our end of the year recognition where they all got certificates. In addition to the they had to put in their PowerPoint presentation as to what they came out of Tech Club. And at the end of that, they were all using digital smartwatch where they can link to their phone. So definitely the demonstrations and awards and field trips, in addition to doing the model, I definitely feel like I'm um, awarded and um, great. And I feel like the model was very helpful, even for me. And I have a degree in mass media communication. So some of those things, I was like, oh my God, wow. So it was definitely fun. It was definitely a learning experience, not only for the kids, but also for me as well. That's great. Thank you. And just, um, you said you mentioned a middle school audience. How many members at one time were in your uh, sessions? So it varies, but I've always had like 15 to 20. 15 to 20, cool. And how many computers did you have in your room? What was that equipment like? We have 26 computers in our computer. 26, cool. So you actually had a good challenge, and that is more computers than kids. Yes. Cool. That's awesome. Great. Thank you so much. We're going to move on now to our friend Kyle. So Kyle, tell us about what you guys did. So our experience here was a little bit different than uh, Lakita's, I would say. A little bit more broad, uh, broadly implemented, uh, and less specifically. Uh, the uh, programs were implemented by myself and by our Boys and Girls Club directors, uh, Dan and Emily. Now, uh, I need to preface this explanation with a little bit of information about Sarah Hines House. Um, my understanding uh, is that uh, it's uncommon for other clubs to do what we do, which is we have four required programming uh, every week. So we have two programs that all members are required to regularly attend, so at least every other week. Uh, these are called uh, our Boys Club and our Girls Club programs and our Boys Gym and uh, Girls Gym programs. So uh, kids have to have regular attendance uh, with their own, with their, their age group uh, in these programs every week. So some of the My Futures modules, in fact, most of the ones that we implemented were implemented in our club programs. So uh, that would be first and second graders together, third and fourth graders together. Uh, all of our high school members have theirs together. We call that uh, Midler Senior uh, uh, Club. So uh, a lot of programs that we implemented were based around the age group that they were, uh, we were exposing it to. So for example, I know that I actually filled in, I was the girls club director uh, one week, if you can imagine. Um, not the prettiest girls club director, I'm afraid, or so I was, I don't know. Uh, but I implemented an encryption module uh, for our intermediate girls, which is middle school. So as you might imagine, that was very relevant to their experience. These are girls who um, have online personas, uh, passwords, accounts. Um, it was, I think, very eye-opening for them uh, to talk about, I think we, uh, safe to say we had a couple people whose password was literally password. Um, so I think it was uh, a good educational experience for them. Um, the, the nice thing about the modules is there is a lot of flexibility um, and a pretty broad range of programs. So for my Media Lab program, where we think about producing 
Um, you know, digital art or uh, digital writing, things like that. We were able to. We attempted to work on uh, Sarah Hines House's Wikipedia page, for example. Uh, and we ran into some problems, which we may get into later in the Q and A. I'm not sure, but uh, in that way, we were able to tailor the programs that were presented to us to both age group and uh, uh, program. So whether they were doing it in club or media lab, uh, those were the places that they were implemented. But going forward, it's not unthinkable that there would be other places, uh, other programs. It, uh, it would be relevant to do certain modules. But that was our experience. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, and um, I want to draw a distinction uh, because, in fact, your program is a bit different. It sounds like what you guys did was to, in fact, in integrate the modules into other aspects of what you do as opposed to run a standalone program called My.Future. Is that correct? Precisely. Cool. So, audience, you guys may have questions about that. As you hear that, there are two very different models for running for, for running these experiences at your club. Um, uh, third and and uh, final fantastic case study here, Abby. Um, we will jump to your experience. Um, in fact, uh, could you reintroduce though where you ran this? Um, because now you're at BGCA. Where where were you when this happened? Um. So. Back then, I actually worked with the uh, Boys and Girls Club of the Low Country, and specifically, we were running My Dot Future at the Batten Family Unit on Hilton Head. Um, that one was a lot of fun. The kids had a great time, and we actually took the approach. We were already running technology program with all of our members, um, so we used the My Dot Future Essentials modules as a part of that program. So we would pick a lesson for each age group each day, and they would run through that module as a part of their technology time. Um, ranging from all sorts of activities. As you know, we already mentioned, there's a huge variety of things they can do. Um, we tried to pick activities that we noticed the kids either hadn't really been exposed to or uh, that they needed some work on. So especially things like passwords, um, we ended up noticing because uh, we were sort of running through the modules with the kids that uh, they don't do any Excel at school. So we did a lot of the um, activities that focused on kind of those basic computer skills, using yeah. Excel, Word, writing, those sorts of things. Um, and put essentially all of our members from kindergarten on up through teens were able to do different activities. Um, as you notice on the website, they're kind of sorted beginner, intermediate, and advanced, which don't necessarily eliminate any member from doing any activity, but give you a really great guide about which ones are uh, basically already appropriate for what age groups and which ones might take a little more tweaking if you intend to run it with a different age. Cool. Fantastic. And how many members were in your sessions at one time? Um, we generally ran session with about 20 to 25 members. Um, we had okay. a computer lab that uh, sat 28 at the time, so oh, wow. about the about the right number. Um, again, you know, the older members could be a little more independent. The younger mm -hmm. ones would, would take a little bit more uh, hand holding, so mm -hmm. sometimes a little bit longer with them. That's cool. And and of um of everything, what sort of worked really well? What what did what didn't take a lot of translation? What what could you pick up and run with? Um, what what was the easy part? Um, well, not that any of it was very difficult, but uh, definitely, you know, the activities are really great because they're laid out in such a way that you can really get the members doing things. So, you know, the, the things they need to know, the stuff that you need is laid out at the top, um, but also if it's an Excel activity, you know, there's some things that they get to jump into and some things they get to really do, which is nice. Um, basically sort of having that guide that this is what we're going to work on and, and this is our objective. Um, helps get the kids moving and, and keep them moving. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that ability to also offer different things. So it's not just that we're going to do Excel forever, we're going to do Excel this day, and the next day there's already a new activity that we mm -hmm. can do. Cool. Kyle, what about you? What, what was easy How what uh, in terms of integrating the modules with other work? Was, was something simpler than uh, everything else, or was it um, a challenge to translate? Um... What was occasionally challenging was our equipment situation. I think I heard Lakita say earlier that they had access to up to 25 computers um, in, a, in a space, uh, a classroom space, which is terrific. I'm, I'm mad jelly. Uh, but uh, sometimes what we had to do, just from a tech standpoint, occasionally we had to utilize um, iPads 
Hmm. Uh, we have some iPads. Uh, one thing that we were able to utilize are uh, sharp boards, basically smart boards, uh, rather large um, TV slash computers. I'm sure most people, most uh, program staff watching know what I'm talking about there. So some of the uh, programs, everybody doesn't need their own computer. Hmm. Um, if we had printouts or if there were, you know, I know we did, um, we made short films hmm. with, uh, with some intermediate members. So in that case, you know, we utilized our camera equipment, things that I have for Media Lab. Um, but as far as implementing the programs across our different, I shouldn't, I'm using the word program too much. In terms of implementing the modules across our programs, there we go, that's better, now you know what I'm talking about. Um, as I said, uh, a lot of the modules fit in very naturally. Uh, the, the goal of the club program is social education. Um, so talking about um, protecting yourself online, talking about uh, utilizing GPS technology, simple things like that that are basically life skills um, fit very comfortably into that uh, basket. Um, obviously, Media Lab is a natural fit. Uh, looking back, there are things that we could have done with a program here called Design Factory uh, that we didn't quite were quite able to implement. We started implementing programs and we came back from break in January, and by that point, certain things had been planned out. We weren't able to to integrate those. But um, yeah, I would say uh, the drawback to doing modules across a number of programs is that we weren't able to do things like um, digital badging or uh, portfolio creation mm. um, simply because uh, most of our members were only exposed to maybe mm. two modules. Mm. Um, mm. So that is a drawback to the way that we implemented mm -hmm. um, implemented the program, I suppose. As opposed to say having a, a set time every week where you do my future pathways. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I wonder, uh, are there ways that badges could be worked in over time across multiple programs? Is that oh, even a possibility? Absolutely. Uh, certainly, would be possible if you set aside one club program per month, or uh, or two. Um, kids would in that way be able to create a portfolio slowly over time and our, mm -hmm. our club directors would still have the freedom to be able to do the kind of programming that they've always done. Mm -hmm. um, a program like Media Lab. Uh, one place that we were able to implement some of the modules was in what we call Education Nation, what I understand most mm -hmm. of the rest of the country calls Power Hour. Um, mm -hmm. So that was a place that we were able to do some of the modules with the the slight spin that they were kind of treated as competitions. So typing, mm -hmm. uh, we were at any time we can turn something into a competitive endeavor, that's going to generate a lot more interest. Mm -hmm. so that was something that I was able to do. But again, that's mm -hmm. informal. That's a drop-in program, so kids mm -hmm. are, are just able to come and go as they please. Mm -hmm. um, so in doing that, they're not creating a, a portfolio. Mm -hmm. At least they didn't. They could, but mm -hmm. at least we, we didn't do that this year. Interesting. That's helpful. Um, that theme of competition you point out is, in fact, really prevalent. Um, we've heard that in a number of places. And uh, Abby and I had the pleasure to be in Phoenix uh, recently and, 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 in fact, ran a training um, on My Life Future and the typing competition that happened among staff. And that was pretty intense. Yeah. Um, so typing lends itself well, but I'm, I'm imagining also like photo editing and other sort of mm -hmm. presentation opportunities. Um, but I, I'd love to know, that, um, Lakita, what, what worked well for you guys? And um, if there were areas that were a bit um, meddlesome and, and maybe not as simple, what were those? What should people watch for? Um, no, definitely, I wouldn't say a challenge, but working with the older group, I could say that I expected more. So with the schools not teaching us the basics, like how to do the middle or how to do the PowerPoint, we had to start from the beginning. So what I did do is before I even started on the matter of I created emails for all of my kids that had signed up. So they didn't have to do that. And so I did that and I did their passwords. So when I opened up, I gave them the emails and passwords. And we talked about passwords, how to make it creative, and that's so easy. And so we, um, one of our biggest things was also talking about cyberbullying because 
that day, but that is happening at that all on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and all those different things. Um, as Kyle had mentioned, I wish I could have utilized digital badging more, but we did it at a time where it was from 6.30 to 7.30. And it was always time for me to go, so I couldn't always send them when I wanted to. And as I said, why not do it my head? It was a challenge for me because I manned the front desk. I worked the front desk. So, um, the registration and stuff together, answering them those with the badges, it was constant. But now that I know more and more, I know how to have it. That's time, but that's why I did the metal monthly. Hmm. So I'll give them the accept master medals a month. And I did a big end of the year program where we did the catering. They had to do a PowerPoint of all the models that we had submitted with the 15. They had to talk about everything. That's fantastic. That's that's very helpful. Um, so, uh, what would your kids learn next? Uh, were they excited to sort of dig in somewhere and then keep moving forward, or uh, what? What was most interesting to them? The most interesting thing to them was doing a lot of the coding, and they like to hmm. present. And I didn't think that so every time that they would do something, I would take like a success master. They would present. They love to present. Yeah, huh. That was exciting. And it's so weird because most of my kids, they just like journalism. So like um, launching like the club newsletter and stuff that they were spreading. Hmm. So they love their phone so much. I got um, an outside volunteer to come in from Act Solutions Solution where they had to create videos using their cell phone. They were able to edit everything using the game, your video app. And that said, it was phenomenal. For those that didn't have phones, we used like our Galaxy Tab, our iPad, but I was just, that was their fun learning. So they created videos of what they were um, over the course of this quarter. So definitely, um, stuff using their phones and how to edit, that was what they did. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, does anyone, uh, Abby, um, Kyle, do any of you have questions for each other about, about what you hear? I do have a question um, for Kyle, because they only did it, you guys did it on a broad range of you did it for each age group. Did you do, it worked every day or did you do a different age group again or every day you just want something with my dad? I'm sorry, I didn't catch uh, catch the end of that there, Lakita, your, with your mic. I'm saying, how did it work with scheduling? Was it implemented with all the different age groups? Did you do it every day? where it was a different uh, staff person lead those models with that person, or was it you doing the models with each agent so you were rotating? How did you implement doing it with all the agents? Yeah, it was, we, essentially the way that we implemented it was uh, myself um, and the boys and the girls club directors just kind of informally would say, where are we at right now? How many have we done? Are you, uh, which, which ones do you think you can use? And because uh, I think we want to do 15 in uh, the latter half of our program year. And so everyone just sort of tried to figure out where it fit in organically. So uh, there were a couple of periods, I think, Lakita, where we went about, uh, about two weeks without implementing one. Um, it just sort of, wherever we had openings and we felt they fit organically into the existing program schedule, um, that's where that's where someone would just go ahead and implement one. Um, <laughs> it sounds really uh, kind of ad hoc and like we didn't know what we were doing, but it just sort of we, we looked at what we had, and um, I know there were a couple times that a program worked well with a certain age group, and so uh, Dan, the boys club director, would go ahead and think, well, that worked well with our junior members. It would probably work pretty well with our intermediate members. Um, but uh, no, we did not have a, we didn't have regularly scheduled time for it. It just was a matter of where we felt we could organically use uh, the module materials um, in the midst of the program here. Yeah. Cool. 
Cool. Abby, any, anything to add to that? Any thoughts? Um, well, it certainly sounds like you guys are doing a fantastic job. Um, I would definitely, I think, just add that flexibility is key. Um, I think it's really important to remember the needs of your members, whether it's their timing, their age group, that they need a snack before they'll settle down, or you know how it fits into power hour or what have you, um, and that the program is really built to accommodate that. So if it is that you need to split one module over two days, or you know do the first three activities and skip number four and then go to number five, um, that that's really there and, and that the staff should feel empowered to make it work for their members and not the other way around. And Lakita, did you guys do the portfolios? Did you guys create portfolios? We did create the portfolios. I said we did like uh, last and then just teaching them how to email them. Okay. So that's what I wanted to do. But I did have a struggle with doing it. But it was just teaching them how to save, what to save the ads, what to save the ads, what to save the ads, what to save the Hmm. I see. Because I think the, the official mechanism for, for the portfolios is a Google Doc account, right? Yeah. Interesting. Um, actually, and on that question, um, Lakita, oh, Lakita's uh, <laughs> run away. Lakita, um, w would you be so kind as to describe, was there like a kerfuffle at all when you began to create email addresses for members? Was, was there anything necessary um, at the organization or club level to engage members in using specific email addresses for club purposes that, that people should know about? No, so what I did, I definitely did like this first name, last name, yeah. Only challenge was you can only do so many under a certain phone number. So now they have to, you have to verify your phone number. But like, I have an amazing team. So I was able to use my work phone for maybe five. I used uh, my branch director's work phone for mm. another five. And so that was the only struggle. But I definitely feel like it helped as a group to. So when they first met, I, I was able to send them a welcome email with all of their emails. And I said, that's the best age time. Cool. So um, I think it worked. That's great. Anyone else? Abby, Kyle, anything to add about email addresses and, and, uh, and kids? I would just say, I mean, obviously, when you're working with younger members, it's difficult, if not impossible, to expect to have an email address for all of them. Um, for our younger members at my club, we basically used a shared network drive. Um, and then when we wanted to share those things with parents or teachers or whoever, we uploaded them to a Dropbox. Um, and our middle school members and high school members actually already had Google accounts issued through their school, so they were able to use those very easily, which was fantastic. Um, for those younger members that obviously, you know, they're just not going to have their ability to run their own email address, um, we sort of stayed away from signing up individuals um, and just sort of worked with either a, a group shared folder or a Dropbox. Awesome. Cool. So um, we have a number of questions from the audience, uh, and and in fact they they do touch at some of these. So for instance, one of them is so uh, how do you issue badges or um, portfolios to children who are under 13 years of age and their parents don't want them to have email addresses mm -hmm. uh, and also aren't allowed on social networks? Um, what are your what are your thoughts about that? What is it? Uh, is there anything you did differently for members who are younger than uh, 13? Like I said, we definitely didn't sign them up for their own accounts. Um, they saved everything to a, a shared network folder at the club. Um, like Lakita said, you could use a USB drive and, and keep it entirely offline if you were of a mind. Um, and there is, and Dave, I think you can be more specific than I can, a mechanism to award badges without an email address. You can print off a certificate for that as well. You're correct. I'll um, demo that really quickly. So in fact, on the back end of the website, um, in that coach dashboard, um, you will see the, the four badges here, um, Kilo, Mega, Textbert, and Giga. Not quite in that order, Kilo, Mega, Giga, Textbert. Um, so if you do go to send a badge to someone, generally that's done by email. A digital badge is a graphic. It, it arrives as a graphic, but it's actually much, much more than a graphic. It's a graphic with data baked into it. It's a little like you're um, baking a cookie and you have all those ingredients in there that you could like read about. Um, in the future. So the, the uh, badge is um, issued to a person by email address. And so if a person with that email address 
imports the badge into a variety of different mechanisms. The information about when it was issued, who issued it, etc., etc., those will all appear. That stuff is baked into the back. As Abby mentioned, that's done by email. And email is not always cool for members of any age or members who are younger than 13. Every club is going to be a little different here. So on that badge page, you'll notice down below that there's a green link that says click here to issue a special badge by paper. So you can actually print this out. Um, this is what it looks like. It's a certificate. Um, a number of clubs also use a mechanism like this to certify that members have completed NetSmarts or other programs. So this is essentially that certi certificate of completion. It says, you guys have done it, right? And you can use it the same way. It's basically um, a way to recognize who's accomplished the program, but it can also be a gateway to other things at the club. So yes, you know, you've completed the Kilo badge. Now you can move on to complete NetSmarts and then get unlimited access to the computers, play Minecraft, whatever else you want to sort of bake into that space. Cool. Um, the next question is, let's see here, um, how are we going to report my.future? Is this replacing club tech in the digital arts suite reporting categories to BGCA? Um, the answer to that one is yes. My.future um, Ha so club tech is being phased out and in fact it has been phased out if you move to the club tech pages in the former my club my life space you will see my dot future so my dot future um, has been established and over the next uh, basically 24 months um, new elements of my dot future are coming into play so for instance we've rebuilt the foundations um, there is there are swirling conversations around uh, whether we develop robotics or coding, etc. Whether those are what's done first and, and what that looks like, that's in dialogue now and will evolve over the course of the summer. Um, so really, club tech as a name um, should be reported as my dot future for any reporting purposes, and you can look to the my dot future programs over time to iterate what you've known as the club tech programs. Let's see here. Anyone else have anything to add to that? Has the transition been hard at all? Nope. Okay. Silence. Let's see. Uh, we need <laughs> we need an ability to create Minecraft servers. Um, mm -hmm. Raise your hand in the audience. I can't see you. None of us can see you, but raise your hand if your kids like Minecraft, and we're going to see everyone go, yes, because Minecraft is awesome, right? It's it's way cool. It's like Legos on a computer screen. It's amazing, and we can tap that for fantastic educational purposes. Um, we hear BGCA can't run you a Minecraft server. Um be great if we could, but that's not in the cards right now. Um, uh, Lakita, Kyle, Abby, have you guys run servers at your clubs at all? We did not run servers. We did have some kids with uh, individual accounts on their own devices, which they had a ton of fun with and, and definitely some amazing things you can do with that. Um, as far as running a club server, unfortunately, we never had the ability to do that. No, it's something I'd be interested in, and I've had many kids uh, over the course of the year, um, especially in the context of Education Nation, when they have that sort of uh, relatively free access to the computers, ask about Minecraft. Um, the In just my preliminary research, the problem that we ran into was that each kid, um, that your my understanding was, and again, I don't play Minecraft, my understanding was that your access to the game was predicated on the existence of a personal account, meaning that a kid wouldn't just be able to hop on any computer and and just pick up and play, that it was we would run into account issues in that way. Yeah, um, we've heard a number of creative solutions from, from organizations. Um, uh, I will try to pull some of those together and put them into the My.Future space, maybe in... in um, on the, on the resources section of that lesson. Um, there's already one short resource you guys can look at there on, that, on the Minecraft lesson specifically that talks about how some clubs are using it, um, but certainly to the sort of management end. Um, another recommendation, in fact, from the audience that, that is good that some clubs also use is Minecraft EDU. 
which has a different sets of opportunities and constraints. Um, I believe it's not free, um, but I believe it's also of lower cost and has a different set of um, uh, account um, tweaks that make it more appropriate for an education context. Um, so do check that out. Uh, and that same, actually the same comment says that Coursera, uh, Canvas, MOOC, and edX sometimes offer courses on how educators can use Minecraft educationally. Um, so do check out those spaces. There's a lot about using Minecraft in, in educational contexts, um, and it's used very successfully. So uh, just because it's a game doesn't mean it's um, bad. In fact, it's pretty cool. So uh, do check it out. Let's see, next question. Actually, Lakita, here's a question for you. Um, the question is, if you saved the email account information for your members so that you could troubleshoot in case members had problems with accounts. So saying they have problems logging in? Yeah. Did you, did you save that information? Did you store it somewhere? Yes. Yeah, so um, I have my computer on their email addresses and passwords. I kept them to me, but I also gave shit to them. On their own, the way it wasn't like Miranda Miranda or the like that, but that's what you can't crack on my computer and it's still passwords and things like that, but never give them to them. That's great. And wh where did you put them? <laughs> but email. And yeah, where did you actually physically keep them? Did you do you do you guys have a file with that information? Where do you did you lock it up? What how secure was it? Yeah, I have a file. Cool. All right. Not yet. Let's see here. Um, and another related question about email is whether email addresses are required to set up accounts for children. Um, so th the question is, are email addresses required to set up accounts for the children? I'll be using this for members between the ages of 5 and 12, so I want to make sure their parents are on board with the idea. Um, the answer is that email addresses are not required for my.future. Um, in fact, there are very few times when an email address is literally required to, to run an activity. Abby, you're nodding, and I wonder what that nod means. Can you talk a little about yeah, that? I, I completely understand. Um, you know, anytime you're involving members who are younger than 13, everything becomes much more difficult just in terms of the information that you can and cannot have them give out. Um, but definitely, I, I ran probably a dozen or more modules with members under the age of 13, and we were never required to have email addresses. Um, you know, very seldomly would be using a website that required any sort of login in general. Um, so, but for completion of the modules, uh, none of our members registered for email addresses with us, and we still completed hmm. everything we needed to. Cool. Thank you. Any other thoughts about email addresses out there? Lakita, who has disappeared, she's turned invisible, not just her hat. Uh, Kyle, anything to add to that? No, no, Dave. Uh, we since we. Uh, just implemented them on uh, in the existing programs. Again, we weren't able to have the kill the kids build those accounts mm -hmm. um, online. Since again, uh, the mo I think we probably had some kids that were maybe exposed to maybe three or four of the programs. But uh, again, they didn't always have access to a computer while that program was being implemented. Mm -hmm. um, so we did not. Uh, we didn't reach that step. Okay, that's great to know. Thank you. Uh, two related questions. I'll do what I can to synthesize here. So, the big question is, um, how do we sort of, is it possible to automate the tracking of what kids are doing and is there anything to capture, monitor, um, and evaluate the effectiveness of the programs outside of the portfolio? Um, the, the answer is that uh, no, there's no automated system for watching what kids do, right? Um, the old program, the old Skilltech program, was in fact semi-automated. For those of you who remember Skilltech 1 and 2, um, I see a smile on Abby uh, because I think remember, she remembers it. Remember fondly. Yeah, so um, that system was really a series of point-and-click flash exercises. Uh, we want young people 
as you all do too, to really enjoy, to have fun, to, to poke and to prod and to break and build and construct, uh, it's a messy process. And, and it's sometimes at the end of 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes, two days, kids will have something that they've built. They've had, they'll have a photo they've edited. Other kids may not get all the way to a completed photo. So success doesn't necessarily mean um, the, the metric isn't like edited photo is the end game in all cases, right? That's There, there are things there. Um, Abby knows, I imagine, from the uh, Tell It Like It Is activity with kids making audio. Um, uh, Abby, what did success look like in, in different forms in that, if, if you have an example? Absolutely. Um, it came a lot of different ways. So, you know, there are days where you have that completed piece and it's lyrics and it's music and it sounds fantastic. Um, you know, there are days where just getting that kid in the door and writing something about themselves is more than that member has ever done and, and is something that they needed to do. Um, we had a, a girl come in and, and ended up writing a song about her neighbor committing suicide and not that that was ever something she wanted to share publicly, but for her to be able to, to deal with it that way was a huge success on her part. Um, so definitely, you know, your members who are different ages, who have different needs, um, their end product isn't all going to look the same, but their ability to still gain that skill and, and still get something out of that is, is obviously universal. So um, certainly, you know, the day that you have this amazing product and you can't wait to share it is fantastic, and that's definitely what we're shooting for, but... Uh, there are a lot of days where, you know, just getting there and, and getting it to where somebody can, can work on it and somebody can play around with it and somebody can realize that I can do this is, is definitely still worth doing, even if it's not a finished product. Awesome. Uh, Lakita, anything to add? Um, uh, I'm missing some questions. I'm sorry. Cool. Okay. No, uh, no worry. Um, uh, the qu big question was about measurement. Um, so actually, Kyle, Lakita, how did you guys measure success here? What was your metric for that? Um, so we definitely just did like a attendance to see how often they were um, attending, how frequent they were attending. Okay. So I think our membership impact that we did kind of helped me with that. But um, definitely just success stories and having them talk about what it is that they mind and talking in and um something to that the world recognition having them create a PowerPoint of every single thing that they can Awesome. Kyle, anything to add to that? No, we uh, Dave, we, we kept the uh, um, you know uh, general attendance, how many of our kids were exposed to these programs. Um, it's probably no surprise that many of our grants, many of the things that we do, um, are about exposing kids to programs that promote digital literacy. Hmm. So it was all of a piece with um, things that we've tried to do. Again, because of the fact that we uh, had such a uh, that it wasn't targeted at certain age groups, but rather we had a very, very broad range of exposure among our membership to at least one of the modules. Hmm. Um, it was uh, it was more about those those numbers for us. We weren't able to get kids on the pathways mm -hmm. with the way that we implemented it this year. Hopefully that will change. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, great. So we're just about at the end of our time now. Uh, we could jam on this all day long. In fact, there's so much to dig into here with email addresses and devices and mobiles and policies. And I mean, there's like a world of swirling stuff, pathways. Um, the notes I would add on the evaluation. Um, uh, as as uh, our fantastic participants have mentioned, um, measuring participation, measuring frequency of attendance, those are easy metrics, right? And those are great metrics. Those are sort of core metrics. We have a couple other cool things we can measure. The idea of a portfolio. How many kids create portfolios, right? And what do they do with them? That might be more anecdotal than necessarily a hard number, but, but helping young people find value in crafting and building and working towards something bigger is something that I, I think is worth really looking at. And then secondly, badges. Um, particularly important for you guys who do want to construct systems around this. For instance, how many young people uh, achieve 
the the beginner level badge the kilo badge or the mega badge and so on and the activities associated with that you can use those as metrics to figure out where you want to drive to in the future right maybe you have a lot of kids getting through one let's go for the next um, and also relevant if you're using them as gateways for things so if you want to have young people jump into um, essentials kilo and then net smarts and then ideally to um, be really cool if they were tech experts um, to give you a purpose for why the badges are cool the Textbird badge is like your junior staff badge. So to achieve a Textbird badge, the idea is not only do young people complete projects, but begin to mentor other people in the computer lab, right? So there's more to it than just sitting at a computer and doing stuff. It's important because it grows them as leaders in the technology space. So if you have kids who are interested, that's a place to drive them. It's a metric you could even look at. Um, probably not appropriate for all members. So uh, there's a lot more we can jam on. Um, there are a couple big takeaways. The first of all is um, uh, viewers out there, please a, hen, a round of applause for our fantastic um, panelists. Thank you all very much for joining. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure and it's in fact truly important to have the voice from the movement on these uh, conversations. This is the first um, tech hangout of many to come. The next topic is going to be programming and coding in the club space as a pathway. Um, that hangout is going to be held the 21st of September of this year at 3, 3 p.m. Eastern. Sort of same uh, idea, right? So Google Hangout will come together, ask questions, uh, jam on topics with some fantastic panelists. Um, if you have questions about uh, anything related to what you've just heard, please email us. The email address is myfuture at bgca.org. You can find that email address on the website. The website address is myfuture at bgca.org. The final question I wanted to address before everyone takes off is about trainings. Um, we've received a number of questions about trainings, uh, in-person trainings, us traveling to a site or having something here. Um, Please email us if you're interested in that. We don't have an answer for you today. We're talking actively about what that looks like moving forward. Um, we understand that in the club tech era, there was one sort of scenario for trainings. We're figuring out how we can most appropriately evolve that for the, the scenario we have today. So if you're interested in that in-person training or even an online training, send us an email. Again, the email address is myfuture, M-Y-F-U-T-U-R-E, at bgca.org. Uh, and then the final takeaway, try this. Um, try it with your organization. Keep kids focused on fun. Keep kids focused on making and doing and building. Look to badges, look to portfolios, and think about pathways. What can you engage them in today, but then where can you bring them over time? There's so much possible. So um, we look forward to that next Hangout with you in September. Thank you again to our panelists. Anyone else have a closing thought they want to share? Go forth and have fun. Thanks, Go sir. forth thanks for, and have uh, fun. Thanks for hosting us. We're happy to share about our experience and look forward to continuing to implement my future modules and hopefully improve our delivery and the experience for, for our members going forward. Fantastic. Cool. Okay, guys. Well, thank you all very much. We will um, uh, be in touch with various things. Look to the website, myfuture.net, for that news about the next Hangout implementation and our contact address. So go forth, as Abby said, and have fun. Thank you. <laughs>